brother, you may catch this broadcast on uh, my uh, Facebook uh, page or YouTube. I'm glad to have you. Sundays with Brother Barry Scott. And uh, this message will be coming right uh, probably about the last Sunday in June, if I'm uh, figuring uh, right. Uh, again, we are in a series, uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the great faith chapter. The title of today's message, The Life of Faith. I'm going to read uh, verses 8 through 19, and you may notice uh, if you've uh, listened to some of the previous, well, it's usually just some short verses, but we're actually coming to the dominant figure when we speak of faith, and that is the Old Testament character of Abraham. When it comes to faith, no one is greater than the life of Abraham. And so that's why we are looking at the life of faith or the lifestyle of faith. Now, again, let me remind you, what is faith? Faith is the confident assurance that God is in control of the future and he plans what's best for my life because he loves me. Faith is believing that God can bring something good out, even, out of even the worst of circumstances. Faith is believing that God can use you to make a difference in the world. Faith is taking advantage of the fresh starts that God makes available to us. Faith is having the courage to step out in faith, taking risks for God's sake, and resisting discouragement in order to accomplish the task that God has laid before us. Faith is choosing to obey God immediately, completely, joyfully, and continually, even when we don't understand what he's doing. Faith is expecting the best because God is the best. And so we turn again to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and I'm going to start with verse 8, going down through 19. All speaking of Abraham, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who'd made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came, to descend, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they're looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they'd left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he's prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. Center stage among the faith heroes stands Abraham. So great is his legacy of faith that he is seen as the model of faith, not just uh, in one religion, but for th the three great religions in the world today, the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians. A uh, little children's song. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right, I'm not going to go there. Uh, he's rightly called the father of the faithful. He is the greatest Old Testament example of the life of faith. There are only two ways to live. One way, by far the most common, is to live by sight, to base everything on what you can see. The other way is to live by faith, to base your life primarily and ultimately on what you can't see. 
The Christian way is the faith way. We've never seen God or Jesus Christ or heaven or hell or the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've never seen any of the people who wrote the Bible. Uh, though we see the results of them, we've never seen any of the virtues that God commands or any of the graces that he gives, yet we live in the conviction of all these things by faith. We bank our earthly lives and our our eternal destiny on things which we have never seen. That's the way the people of God have always lived. And Abraham leads the way. A relationship of faith on his part, grace on God's part. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6 says, Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord declared him righteous because of his faith. Uh, I, I, I look at Abraham's life because Abraham was as human as you and I are. Under pressure, he told lies. Twice, uh, he gave, uh, twice that's recorded in scripture, I think this is something he did all the time, he gave away his wife to save his own life, offered her to another man. Uh, but uh, James chapter two, verse 23, tells us that Abraham was called a friend of God. Despite all of his failures, all of his faults, Abraham was called a friend of God. Why? Because of his faith. You don't have to be perfect to build a great life, but you do have to build a life of faith. And I want to point out five truths about the life of faith from Abraham uh, using five uh, words that start with P. So we're going to look at the pilgrimage, the promise, the power, the perseverance, and the proof of faith. First of all, Abraham's life shows us the pilgrimage of faith. Uh, verse 8, by faith Abraham was called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Abraham left a comfortable, secure home. Everything was going, as far as we know, great in his life. And he took off someplace, no idea where he was going. In fact, he traveled over 500 miles. Uh, he wasn't even a believer when God called him, uh, Abraham answered. You see, faith goes where God calls us to go. Uh, God speaks, faith listens. God promises, faith trusts. God commands, faith obeys. Faith puts the matter in God's hands. Uh, an 84-year-old grandmother uh, lived in the same community, the same city as her children and her grandchildren. Uh, one day, one of her grandchildren came to check on his grandmother and uh, she answered the door and said, how you doing, grandmother? She said, oh, I'm, I'm, everything's fine. Everything's uh, 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 great. Uh, I did have a little problem uh, la last night. Uh, and the grandson, well, grandmother, what happened? She said, well, I, I heard all kind of racket and I realized somebody had broken into my house and they were rummaging around in my closet. Good gracious, the grandson said, Grandmother, what did you do? Did, did you call the police? She said, No, I, I wanted uh, uh, one of the family to get, get over here. We'll do that now. She said, Well, what did you do? She said, Well, I got a hammer and nail and I nailed the door shut. Uh, it was late and I didn't want to bother the family. I just nailed the closet shut and I went on to bed to sleep. Now, now, that's an example of the type of faith Hebrews is trying to describe. A faith that nails the doors of doubt shut and then calmly leaves the rest to God. That's the kind of faith that God tells us Abraham had, and it so impressed God that Abraham is given the title the father of all who believe, Romans 4, 11. Faith always involves risking. Some people want a guarantee of success before they obey God. They read something in the Bible and God tells them to do something. They say, okay, God, once you guarantee it's going to work, I'll do it. 
God says, well, that doesn't require any faith. I want you to believe when you don't see it, and I want you to obey when you don't understand it. Often this living by faith is like driving in the fog. Uh, you can't see the end of the street, but you start out driving anyways, believing that what you cannot see, you will be able to see once you get there. So you drive 100 feet that you can see, then you find you can see another 100 feet, and so on and so on. Thus you keep going until you reach the destination, driving by faith. Geography is not as important as obedience. Not predicting the destination that counts, it's being willing like Abraham to start the journey. God may call us to go where we have never thought of going. Wouldn't it be nice for God to call us to go on a mission trip to Hawaii in the middle of the winter? I, I mean, you know, hey, uh, if God calls me, I'm ready to go uh, r r right now. Uh, I always said if God ever called me to cruise ship ministry, I am available. But I, several years ago, God called me to a place where I never thought about, where I really didn't want to go uh, on a mission trip to Estonia. And I was resistant, but finally I, I felt like God was speaking to me so strongly uh, I wound up going twice and taking my family the second time. It turned out to be one of the greatest blessings of my life. Too often, we decide what we want God to do, and we put our faith in that. Uh, that's not the same as believing what God has promised according to his will and putting our faith in what God has said. We insist that God bless our plans. Faith has no other plans than to be obedient to God. Abraham's life shows us the promise of faith. Verse 9 and 10. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents. He was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Faith not only involves going, but waiting and trusting. Faith is patient to wait for God's promises, holding them to be true. Uh, Abraham waited 25 years uh, for him. Uh, he was uh, promised a land, but he never actually possessed it. Uh, the next three generations of his family lived in tents. In fact, it was 500 years before his first descendants actually entered the promised land and possessed it. Uh, truth of the matter, most of us hate to wait. To wait. But God never gets in a hurry. You know, it's like going down an interstate. Everyone's going 75, 80 miles an hour. And then you come to a work zone and you got to slow down to 40 miles an hour. It seems like you have stopped moving. You, you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. You get impatient. You're tempted to ignore the posted speed, except for the sign that says fines are doubled in work areas. Sometimes the pilgrimage of faith slows down. And we got to wait for God's timing and direction for the journey. Waiting time is never wasted time when it comes to God's promise, for faith knows God will keep his promise. Faith is death to doubt, dumb to discouragement, blind to impossibilities. Through faith, impossibilities become possibilities due to God's promises. Faith holds on to the promise in spite of the circumstances. Faith is heavenly minded. It sees ahead. It sees the big picture. That's what it means in verse 10 when it says Abraham was looking for a heavenly city. Hebrews 13, 14 says, for here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Abraham's life shows us next of all the power of faith. Uh, verse 11, 12. By faith, even though he was past age, Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father. And from this one man came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, as countless as the sand on the seashore. Faith, faith is part. Listen, Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah was 90 the fact that they could actually have a child was a physical impossibility. There were no fertility clinics in their time. 
uh, no Viagra that you could take. Faith is the key to unlocking God's power for us. What are you attempting that can't be done apart from God's help? So often we just do what we can do because we don't have enough faith to trust what God can do. Until you have nothing left but God, you will not discover God is enough. And, and, and until God is all you have, you can never know God is all you need. When God is all that remains, you'll realize he's all that was ever needed. Uh, God is not just the God of the what. God is the God of the how. Now, what do we mean by that? Listen, God specializes in the impossible. Uh, what God originates, he orchestrates. I, I, I have found in my life that God always gives the what before he gives the how. He says, Abraham, you're going to have a baby. Abraham's question was, well, how? God says, don't worry about the how, Abraham. I'll take care of the how. All you have to do is believe. Uh, we, we're told that when Abraham and Sarah heard this, uh, their reaction, is, uh, other than being amazed, uh, th they both laughed. In, in fact, over the course of their lives, uh, they took matters in their own hand. They, they had a child by Sarah's handmaid. It caused a lot of problems. But Abraham continued to believe God's promise. Faith is powerful when it moves beyond what we can do to believe in what only God can do. Our faith can plug us into all God's power. That's why Abraham's life illustrates the perseverance of faith. Uh, perseverance to continue in the grace and certain salvation of God. You find that highlighted in, in, in verse 13 and 16. Uh, it, it points out that none of the Old Testament patriarchs ever saw fulfillment, but they never lost their assurance. God's promise was all they had but it was enough. Uh, they never got it, but they faked it out. Uh, listen, the world promises it right now. There are lots of now churches. Faith believes without having to have right now. God uh, uh, never uh, has done anything for me, some people will say. If I only God would reveal himself, I'd believe in him. Well, seriously? Really? God had never done anything for you? you uh, how about the cross? You're, you're alive, aren't you? Who are you that God should show you more than he's already shown? If you don't believe in God, hey, quit believing his heir. See how that works out for you. Uh, verse uh, 15. If they'd been thinking of the country they'd left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Uh, they refused to turn back. Uh, I love the little uh, chorus that we sang a lot in college. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Faith believes God's promises are greater than the world's attractions. Nothing honors God as much as the life of faith. In fact, nothing honors God but the life of faith. Abraham's life points to the proof of faith. God puts Abraham's faith to the ultimate test. God does not test our faith to see uh, how much uh, we really trust him uh, when we have to, uh, I'm sorry, God does not test our faith to see how much we really trust him when we have to trust him. Faith always results in a choice. Do you believe God? Are what you see. That's why God made Abraham the poster child of that kind of faith. Abraham's faith was the kind that took all the uncertainties of his life and placed them on one side of the scales, and then on the other side he put simply and solely God, and over and over again when the scale was weighed it always came down on the side of God. The proof of faith was the willingness to give back to God everything, including the son of promise he had received by faith. Faith is given even when we can't afford to give. Faith is about giving God what we value the most. The, the fact is, uh, 
It's never really ours until we give it back to God. Then we find the real issue is the giving of our heart. God wasn't interested in a human sacrifice. God was interested in Abraham's heart. But there's an ark of safety, and it's the cross of Jesus. And if we will, by faith, obey God and enter in, we will be saved. May God add his blessings to his word.